Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to JP Barbecue. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Today we're gonna to be looking at these two smokers and seeing what they got to offer. You guys stay tuned. This is gonna be good. And of course, check it out. So if you're new to the channel, guys, do me a favor. Hit that little subscribe button right there. You know and click on that bell you know those i would really really appreciate it you know things like that really help the channel let's look at the main chamber inside the cooking chamber is what, what i would call it now my smoker uh i went ahead and got it with with the seven racks of um of, of grill grates and i also upgraded to the i don't know what you call it the commercial grade restaurant industry type grades uh for it um so you know if ever i'm going to be catering for some people and they're asking for certifications on it you know you can you can get them from chris chris will get you those industry grade certifications if, if you need them so mine has seven racks standard comes four uh it does have an industrial grade uh, gasket along the side to you know keep the heat in it's an industrial grade gasket this gasket can be replaced you can order this and you know and, and, and replace it the size of the uh, of these uh, grill grates 24 inches by 27 so you know 24 by by 27 plenty of room to cook uh, a lot of food in it now uh obviously when you got them this close to each other and when i'm talking about close you know this right here there's only there's less than three inches difference uh you know between the two so you're not going to get a brisket in there you're not going to get a, a picnic shoulder in there it's just not going to fit now here be the distance between this one and this one you can fit one that's roughly a little bit over six inches or from the bottom to the top of that rod it's about six inches so that is plenty of room to get picnic shoulders and to get uh, uh briskets in there you know full package size briskets uh, and you can probably fit one two you can probably fit three on each one so just like the other one uh if i take the the shelves out like every other shelf you know i can probably fit 12 you know full-size packard briskets in there uh, picnic shoulders you know how many can i fit one two three four five six i can probably fit six uh 10 pound uh picnic shoulders on each one times four that's 24 picnic shoulders okay um haven't tried it but you know i, I think i can fit you know 24 of them fairly easy uh, which that's a lot of pork ribs yeah you can fit a lot of ribs in here as well because now with ribs ribs tend to be a little bit thinner you can use every single rack that you want you know and you got one two three four five six you got seven racks uh so one two three four five six uh maybe eight eight racks of ribs on each one times seven so that's 56 racks of ribs you know st louis cut you know that's a lot of ribs man you know that many ribs so but yeah you know plenty of uh, real estate to fit your needs if, if you do decide to go with the seven if you do if you go with the four you know that's standard maybe that'd be be enough for you you know you're gonna have to make that choice on how many racks you want uh if if you don't go with this type of uh, grill grate the grill grate that it comes with standard is the like the like the offset has is the expanded metal type grill grate which you know if you're just cooking in the backyard for you and your friends and family uh, or and depending what part of the country you know you got to check with your local government you know if you're going to be doing going to be using these for catering and stuff like that and they'll tell you what kind of grill grates you got to get you know uh, if you have uh, that kind of municipality in, in your area always check with your local government in regards 
when it comes to catering and the equipment that you're going to be using you want to make sure that it is uh, commercial grade and fits the needs of, uh, of that area so but that's pretty much it for the inside let's look uh, let's look at what else we have on the outside of this uh, smoker so on the top side of this smoker looks like appears to be uh, two stacks two smoke stacks it, it only has one smoke stack uh, right here in the middle is your smokestack and this other one is what you would call your fill port uh, if you're going to be using it as a water smoker you can refill it when the water evaporates off of on the inside of it it does have a little plate i guess uh, if you're outside smoking and it starts to rain that way water doesn't come down and hit your food it's got like a little deflector plate there that can catch uh, you know anything that may fall in there maybe a leaf or something falls in there you know it's got a it's got that plate in there uh, on the inside it does have a, a drain valve so when you go to clean it you can clean this water pan so here's how big this water pan is 22 inches by 25 and a half on one end it's roughly two inches deep on this other end it's two and a half inches deep so it's designed that way that way the water uh, flows downhill when you're cleaning it uh, on the back side you do have a ball valve that you that you open when you're going to be draining uh, the water but that's the water pan guys you know i when it comes to uh, smoking picnic shoulders using this as a with the with the water pan filled oh my gosh that meat just comes out so good so but that's it that's pretty much it for the for the main chamber so let's talk about the ball valves ball valves do come standard uh with this smoker and you get two of them uh one two inch ball valve that's your air dampener controller you can use that to control how much uh air comes into the smoker and I got plenty of videos on how to control the temperatures using that air dampener you know all of my cooking videos that have to deal with this smoker I take you step by step in, in how to control that temperature uh, with it and if you're interested in any of those videos I'll put the playlist for it right there okay uh, but standard two inch ball valve and I believe that other one is a is a one inch ball valve the the drain the water drain for it so uh, you can put another ball valve on it because it's got two ports in it and i think the idea behind it is you can put the ball valve on one and you can put an air dampener controller on the other one or you can put two ball valves on it if you want that way you can have dual control you know and if you're looking to control the temperature in this very very precise not that the ball you can't do that with the ball valves you know look into getting an air dampener controller chris has got them on his website as well and you know heck you can buy them just about anywhere you just want to make sure that you get one that's got a minimum of 20 cfms uh, that's how much air it can put in because if you get you a small one like the the one that i have for my little uh, weber smoky mountain that may not be enough air to, that it can push through i think those are 10 cfms i'm not 100 percent sure but i think what they recommend is is 20 and I, and i think it depends on the size of the smoker that you're going to get if you get like the the one of the other two smaller ones and you're looking to get an air dampener controller check with chris and see what he recommends you know he'll, he'll tell you what you know what to get uh, obviously if you get the 20 you know you're covered okay if you get one too small you could be working that little fan you know over time and uh and then not get your temperature to what you want the off-road package guys these are very good cool looking and and you can move this smoker just about anywhere concrete on the grass you know no problem with with with, with these wheels you know really love this uh, smoker you know both of these smokers are very well built uh and depending on your cooking preference your cooking style you know you're gonna pick one or the other okay uh, but let's talk a little bit about 
why you would want this one over that one and, and vice versa. So why would you get an offset over an insulated vertical smoker? To me, it boils down to preference and your cooking style. You know, what are you trying to achieve? With the offset, you're gonna be using splits of wood, okay? You can use charcoal, but you know, it's, it's an offset. It's what people call a stick burner. You're going to be using, you know, splits of wood in it. Not that you can't use charcoal in it. Yeah, you can cook with whatever you want. But traditionally, an offset smoker, if, you're, if you want your meat to have uh, that wood, smoky uh, taste to it, you know, you're going to go with, uh, with an offset and you're going to be using splits of wood. With the, the insulated vertical smoker, main fuel source is gonna be charcoal briquettes. Okay, and uh, not that anybody is sponsoring me on this video. Lone Star Grill's not sponsoring me. Uh, b and not sponsoring me. This is just me and my personal opinions. This one here, some of my favorite charcoal is uh is bnb &B. i like using bnb &B. it's uh you know it's good charcoal it burns long uh but do you have to use charcoal briquettes no you can use lump charcoal in it as well you just want to be careful with how they're staggered in there because you know they're not all uniform style with like with charcoal briquettes they're uniform style and they can stack together a little bit easier and have a consistent burn all the way through with lump charcoal there's no consistency with the lumps they're lumps and you could have a gap between one piece of lump and the next piece of lump and then your temperature can fluctuate so you just want to make sure that the lump charcoal that you're using that you know the the chunks are very uniform to each other traditionally this this insulated smoker charcoal briquettes is what you're going to use and for the with for the smoke flavor you're just going to be adding chunks of wood don't put splits of wood in it because you'll get an inconsistent burn and you know it, it just ain't gonna burn right you want to use you know splits of wood uh, or chunks of wood you want to use chunks of wood you know about this size okay and and if you have oak splits already you know just take a sawzall to it and cut them down that's what i did i cut these down into you know these small sizes so when i fill it up with the uh, with the charcoal briquettes you know i'll put these on top of the charcoal briquettes and boom there you go there's your your smoke flavor okay um what else if you're if if you're up if you're into staying up all night long guys you know this smoker is good for you um, again briskets take seven eight you know they can take up to 10 hours and if you're cooking for the next day you could be looking at overnight cooks uh, what that means is you're gonna have to stay up with this smoker right here uh, and adding that those splits of wood roughly once you got it up to temp uh, every 45 minutes you're gonna have to add a split or two into it depending on how big the split is just to keep it to your desired temp my desired temp is 275 so every 45 minutes got to add another split maybe two and if you're doing an overnight cook you know that you're not gonna get no sleep okay is what I'm trying to tell you with this one uh, if you're cooking during the day hey, no problem you're outside with your boys you know and you just put fire you just put wood in the fire you know you know that'll that'll work too but for overnight cooks um I, I i wouldn't use this one for overnight cooks i would use this one why once you got the lump charcoal in it and you got it lit and you got the temp dialed in fire management is non-existent anymore you're, you're done with it you know as long as you got enough uh, fuel inside this thing will run for hours, hours, man. So, you know, as far as having to stay up with it, you know, you really don't have to uh, uh, get up and manage that fire because, you know, it's already being managed. You got plenty of fuel source in it. Uh, now, I don't recommend, okay, let me just go to bed, you know, and not monitor my meat. You want to keep a temperature probe inside your, your meat because, you know, if you overcook your meat, you know, you're, 
you know you done messed up your meat here's how i use this smoker once you got your fuel source set and the temperatures dialed in as far as fire management you don't have to worry about it. you you still have to manage uh the meat that you're cooking inside uh, here's how i do briskets briskets once they go inside the smoker uh, i'll cook them till they get to 165 degrees internal and then i'll wrap them either with aluminum or butcher paper chances are really good that i'm probably going to use butcher paper uh, for wrapping it so uh, if i'm doing an overnight cook i'll just cook this and set my alarm on my uh on my uh temperature pro for 165 once it hits 165 that alarm goes off i come out here wrap it in butcher paper put it back in put the temp pro back in and then set the temp for 203 and then go back go back inside go to sleep catch me a couple of z's once it hits 203 come out take it out put it inside my food warmer done deal uh that you can do that with this okay because again every 45 minutes you're gonna have to come out and put a split of wood uh you know just to keep that temperature going so that's the that's the pros and cons into it you know if, if as far as overnight cooks if you're just going to be cooking during the day offset smoker you know it's work fine you want them long overnight cooks and you don't want to worry about managing a fire get you the insulated vertical smoker uh, you know it's it, it's your own personal preference uh what you want uh, me i like them both and depending on my cooking style for that day or what i'm going to be doing i would use this one over that one okay it's it you know it all depends on on what i'm doing if i'm doing short cooks probably fire this one up if i'm doing longer cooks uh overnight won't be using this one but besides that guys that's really about it for these two fantastic smokers and again like i said these are just my personal opinions um you know this video is not sponsored by anybody uh, i do uh you know cook a lot so i do have a lot of experience and i like to share that with people especially if they're going to be spending any amount of money because these two smokers you know they they do cost a pretty penny they are a good investment of of your money that that you know you're going to be spending so but besides that guys i hope you guys like this video do me a favor if you haven't subscribed to the channel hit that subscribe button right there uh, give it a thumbs up share it with your friends the other thing if you want to uh, help support this channel uh, do me a favor right there a link to my website will also pop up go ahead and check out my website that's where i sell the barbecue rubs and and sauces and i also got clothing items as well like if you want a shirt you want a hat got them there i got tumblers you know on, on the website uh you know go out there and visit the website you know and if you're interested in any of my products you know go and get you some be happy to ship it to you but uh besides that guys i love y'all y'all be y'all be good to each other and i will see you guys on the next uh cooking adventure you guys take care